Okay, we made it. Here we are, episode 95 of the Founders Conversation with Mark and Peter and myself. And we've got our special guest, David Crone from Vacaville. Mm-hmm. Hey, Dave. Dave. Hey. Good to see you, man. Good to, see you guys. Good yeah. to be with you. Yeah. The invitation, appreciate it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we absolutely be. love being with you and when we're in LaBarge together and we love coming down to Kingdom Connections, different things that we do to mm-hmm. connect with you guys. And so we're, we're excited for the conversation today. Yeah. And uh, Mark, I'll let you, I'll let you punch it off today, man. Well, you know, I, I think that for some time, you know, we've, we've been talking about um, yeah, from a prophetic understanding of, you know, where we're at. And we, we talked about turning the corner. We take it, you know, like we're heading in a particular direction for the last few years uh, in in COVID, the landscape has felt a little bit bleak and it's, you know, it's felt a little bit tough and it's like we've been going through a tough neighbourhood, um, you know, for for quite some period of time and there's a lot of fear and all of those sorts of things around. But we were picking up quite some time ago that we were turning the corner. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, we know what it is that when you start to pick up something prophetic, it's usually before you, you're actually experiencing it. You know, it's like um, this is all almost preparation. Uh, and so we've been talking about that for quite some time. We've talked about that analogy and all of those sorts of things. But it, it does feel a little bit like, you know, um, prophetically, it feels like we've we've turned the corner and now we're heading. Now what? You know, it's like we've. We're making that corner turn. Now, where are we going? And I think it's great that we've got Dave here today because you know he's ha- you know had a prominent role through the previous moves, um, mm-hmm. and so I'm sure he can be able to help us to be able to uh, you know some of the things that he's learnt um, and some of the things that he picked up. You know, he's 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 discerned, understood. Um, but also it'd be good for us to decide, okay, what, what's, what's God saying? What's God saying about this, you know, next part of mm-hmm. that turn, you know, mm-hmm. what, what, what's it, what's it look like? So mm-hmm. how about we go for that? Sounds good. Any thoughts on that, Peter? Before well, yeah, I think it's, I, it's just great to have you on Dave. Uh, like Chris said, we're, we're my family's so blessed to be, uh, in relationship with you guys. And we just appreciate yeah. how you pour into us and others. And um, yeah, I think that this is such a, such a seasonal word for the body of Christ. And Mark, you were on with, with our friends, Mark and Tammy Hawkins a few weeks ago. And you, the three of you were talking about not growing weary and doing good. And, you know, you've really been talking about this weariness and it's so we're in this corner, but there was such a slowdown for everybody for so long, you know, a slowdown and a deconstruction, almost it felt like demolition sometimes, like we were talking about previously. And I think that, you know, sometimes you walk into a dark forest and you're like, I recognize I'm walking into a dark forest, but you're in it long enough. You almost forget that there's light outside of it. And I think that there's something really strong that you've been bringing, Mark, about this word about breaking past the weariness. And I think as we break past that weariness and kind of step back into the place of hope. And I remember, Dave, a few years ago, you kept talking on hope, 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 hope. It seemed like every time I was hearing you talk, you're talking on hope. And, you know, it's one of those things where I've learned in the body of Christ that when you've got a leader that's speaking on something, there's a reason for it. And I kept kind of coaching myself, like, you're going to need this, you're going to need this, and you're going to need this. And I remember right before COVID happened, the Lord had given Megan and me a word for the year, really her, about sort of unreasonable hope, you know, and hoping against hope. And then COVID happens. And again, you kind of walk into that forest and you're like, Oh yeah, I can see the spirit of fear for what it is. It's not going to touch me, you know, but then two years later, it's like, do we still have hope? And, and we really, I know all four of us really feel like God's calling us out of that corner, you know, through sort of the gateway of the pivot of hope into a place to build. And I think that there's, there's really a call on the body of Christ to recognize the season and transition into some new things. So, um, yeah, I think it's going to be just really good to hear how you've gone through some of those transitions before, Dave, and 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 hear some wisdom uh, that you'd bring. Well, that's that's a challenge right there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, when we, uh, I've been in in church life all my life. Uh, I'm 70 years old. I I was a prenatal church attender. You know, I attended church in my mother's womb and slept under more pews and, and church chairs than you can imagine. 
Uh, and then in, after 24 years of ministry, uh, I, I was I was burned out. I mm-hmm. was like, this has got to change. This can't this can't be what Jesus was talking about when he said he'd build his church and the gates of hell would not prevail against it, because it certainly didn't seem to be that mm-hmm. that's what was going on. And and we were in a successful church. In fact, I still in the we were here at the mission. Uh, it was called something different at the time. We'd been here for about five six years and. Uh, so it's a big, a good growing church and, and doing well in the, in the eyes of most people. But Deb and I were just so absolutely dissatisfied. And then, then we just started hearing that there is some, God was doing something in the land that was quite different. Mm. And uh, our dissatisfaction actually drove us, mm. drove us into greater hunger. Mm. You know, we just, uh, that's often how God does that. He just causes us to be dissatisfied with where we are. Because honestly, we don't move out of where we are unless we're dissatisfied, right? That's right. Unless mm-hmm. Some level of pain. That's right. Pushing is there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so we started just seeking what God was doing and discovered some some watering holes in the United States. And you know, people would say, "Well, you don't need to go there. God's everywhere." Well, that's true, but uh, th- God still does things with places and people mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. are distinct. Mm-hmm. And uh, we found that that it was really helpful to go to some of these places that God was doing something unique and uh, tap into that. And you get into that atmosphere and it, and it begins to infect, infect you. So we went we went through that that time. And, and the, the biggest thing is we just just the whole concept of who God is and how he views us was just totally radically changed. Mm-hmm. Um we just saw how good he is, mm-hmm. how amazingly good he is. And he um, he really d- is not bothered with our exploring the mm-hmm. kingdom. In fact, he invites us into explore the kingdom, mm-hmm. that it's a much wider open space than than religion would have us think. Yes. Uh, and so that was a wow. big, that was a big deal for us. Uh, it just transformed the way we saw church, the way we saw our family. Uh, the way we ministered to people, everything. And, and then we began to see God do such amazing things that it, it just so transformed us. We didn't understand it. We right. honestly did not understand it. Uh, and to this day, I would say I don't have a, um, a superior understanding of all of that. Mm. Uh, but I know that it transformed us. Mm-hmm. And uh, I will take that any day, even over understanding. Mm-hmm. So how, yeah. how did you, you know, one of the things that a lot of people do talk about mm-hmm. is, you, you know, like for instance, um, uh, this, you know, we pray for somebody to, to be healed and they, and they weren't healed. And yet yeah. we know God is a healer. So yeah. it's like, so their focus is trying to understand uh, understanding what's not happening or what God is doing, mm-hmm. you know, even in that time, we saw a lot of things taking place that were out of our experiential range, you know, and and it's like, so h- how did you learn to handle not understanding? Uh, I'm not sure I handled it really well at times. <laughs> right. Deb handled it far better than I. She, she is far, she... She's a very a prophetic person, a very intuitive person. And so typically somebody who's very intuitive can live with mystery a lot easier. Mm-hmm. Than yeah. Someone that's a little bit more of, you know, that, let's study the word. Let's get into the word. Let's go from line yeah. upon line, precept upon precept. And and you prepare your word. You prepare your message like, you know, like crazy. And and you and you uh, so it, it's more difficult to live in that place of mystery. Mm-hmm. Uh but uh, it, it began to be quite an adventure to watch God do that, you know, uh, to watch God mm-hmm. move more freely when we gave up the right to understand. Mm-hmm. It's like it released him to be able to do even more. Mm-hmm. Our understanding, I think, sometimes holds him a little bit captive. Come on. Right? Come if he on. can't move until we can understand, then he... He's not. He's not going to move necessarily in some ways. He's not going to violate us in that way to some degree. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> so when we when we start just saying, "Okay, God, we don't we don't understand what's going on, but we want you. Mm. <clears throat> we want you." 
Yeah. And then uh, the mystery grew, but it grew in 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 what in, in tremendous ways of seeing results. Mm. And that 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 was a big deal. And we had a we had a young man who would who we were actually training for leadership in the church. And we were going through, you know, we were seeing people healed and we were seeing people not healed. We were seeing people set free and others that resist, you know, all kinds of things. He walked into the into the office with uh, with his wife and, and he said, uh, we're, we're leaving the church. And I said, OK, tell me what what we're doing that or what violates you as a Christian. What are we doing? And he said, well, you're praying for the sick as if you believe they're going to be healed. I said, OK, so what what of that is a problem for you? He said, well, th not everybody's going to be healed. And so when you pray that way and you demonstrate the kingdom that way, then these new Christians that are coming in are going to get confused. And he just could not live in that mystery that some mm -hmm. get healed and some don't. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and wow. he, he, he walked out of the church. Well, about, I don't know, maybe five, six, seven, eight years later, I don't remember how many years later, he was in a local church. He's leadership in a local church. And uh, I went to speak in that church. And uh, during the break of the second of the first service, <clears throat> he asked me to, to wait in the green room for him for a minute. And, and he said, Dave, I just want, want you to know that I so apologize for what I said to you in your office that day. I just didn't understand. Mm -hmm. oh. I just didn't understand. Wow. That was the issue. Mm -hmm. He had to understand to be able to receive. He had to understand to be able to enter in. And that that need to understand was blocking his ability to receive from the Lord. Wow. And then let, the God, let God explain, because he does. Mm -hmm. He yeah. does bring us into understanding. Understanding is not a bad word. Mm -hmm. It's just that if we have to understand first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you said something that was really crucial um, when you first started talking about this. You said that you had to give up the right to understand. Mm -hmm. I think there's mm -hmm. a lot of rights that we hold to that are good things, mm -hmm. but what they do is they hold you captive to something. Yeah. They hold you captive yeah. to yeah. that, yeah. you know, like, so I have to understand this before I can believe it. Uh, mm -hmm. Whereas we, we, we know that that is so contrary, actually, because most of the times... You have to believe something before you get to see it or we get to understand. Mm. Yeah, so, that's good. Um, you know, I, I, one of the things that I find myself going to quite a few times, Dave, and I hope I can make this connection, is Jesus in Nazareth. Um, and he's in his hometown, he's in the temple, and he's, <clears throat> he's, he's releasing some revelation and understanding that is just absolutely stirring up the people there until they recognize who he is. Mm -hmm. And at the moment they recognize who he is, it's almost like all of the faith and expectation is just zapped out of that, out of that mm -hmm. place, out of that room. And Jesus goes on to say he couldn't do anything much there at all. Yeah. Uh, he could heal a few people, but he couldn't do anything there because um, people recognized him and therefore says, well, we know who this is. We know who Jesus yeah. is. Mm. And, um, you know, I, I think sometimes that we, we, we do that more often than we realize. Oh, I know that. I know that scripture. Oh, I know that experience. Or, right. you know, I know those sorts of things. And I think sometimes that can be a danger. What, what do you think? What do you think about that? Uh, yeah, there's a real trap in familiarity. Yeah. You know, we we get so familiar with something that we then everything has to fit into that place of familiarity. And it really uh, stops the flow of fresh revelation. Uh, that's why, you know, when Jesus stood in the, in the uh, synagogue and he said, the, the person standing in front of you right now is the one that's fulfilling all this word. Mm -hmm. The blind receive a sight, you know, the year mm -hmm. of the Jubilee is, is upon us, all of those things. So the guy who's doing it is I'm, I'm here. And this mm. word is now fulfilled in me. And they were astounded at his word. Mm. But then mm. they thought, oh, we know mm. this guy. Mm -hmm. Know him. Mm. We know who he is. He's, he's Joseph's son. And as soon as they came to that place of familiarity, 
all revelation stopped. All acceptance of what Jesus was offering to mm -hmm. them was over. Mm -hmm. That's a huge, it's a huge thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and just to bring it into 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 light, we we can have, surely we can have that sort of expectation where we expect God to do what He's always done, which which when we see Jesus, He 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 rarely did the same thing twice. You know, there's a couple of right. incidents, but rarely. You know, it was, it was always something. So we have that, and then we have, uh, okay, we know that. You know, which is the familiarity. You know, yeah, we, mm -hmm. yeah we've we've experienced that. We know that. And so that we become comfortable with some some the way that things are that that yeah. we, we tend to con, can tend to lose that hunger that you talked about that you're mm. at a place of saying we're desperate yeah. we're desperate mm. for something here yeah and I think that's what's what's going on right now I, there there is a real familiar sense to me about what's happening and about to happen wow and, and I, I I keep sensing the warning of the Lord to mm -hmm. Enjoy that because it helps set me up a bit, but to, to not get trapped in that familiarity that there's, there's something much bigger than what he's done before. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we just had to put our dog, uh, a dog down that uh, we'd had for 10 years, loved, the, loved her. Uh, she was a really, really, she was a, um, just a smart, intelligent dog. And when we would leave the house, we'd take her out onto the back porch and we'd give her a treat. And it's just this little tiny, it was just a little tiny treat, but she would know that she was going to get that. And what it would say to her is that we were coming home. Mm. Right? We were going to desert her forever. We were going to come back. So <clears throat> uh, we would take that and I'd say, Cooper, get on your bed. She'd go outside, get on her bed. And I'd toss that thing on the floor on, on her bed and she would, she would eat that and stay there. One day she, she, she hadn't been, you could tell something was wrong with her and I was, we were real concerned about her. And so we had to leave again. And I thought, you know, I'm just going to give her her special treat. Now she has a, she had a different treat that she loved to chew on and it was a bigger bone. It had chicken wrapped around it. It was just, it was just special. You know, it wasn't this little treat we'd give her when we'd go. So I, I put her outside and I said, get on your bed, Cooper. And she gets on her bed and I toss down this treat that she loves that's her favorite, absolute favorite treat. And she looked at it, looked up at me, looked back down at it, and looked at me and wouldn't take it. It's like, where's my normal treat? Mm -hmm. Where's the familiar? Mm -hmm. Wow. Where's the familiar okay. treat that I'm used to? I'm not going to take what's better. I'm not going to take the greater Ooh. because it's not the familiar. Wow. I had to pick up that special bone, put it away and get her that little tiny nothing treat mm. for her to take it. And mm. God just spoke to me so strongly. This is what, this is what can happen mm. in the world today in what he wants to do in the world. He wants to upgrade yep. he wants to take us higher. He wants to give us more. He wants to move us into new levels of glory. And we're, we get so trapped in the familiar that no, give me what I had. Give me what I've had. Yeah, he's, he's he's so like 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 me wanting to treat my dog mm -hmm. for something that she would really like, and we're going no no what where where's what what I had before? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's that's a big lesson for us. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So it it becomes really important, isn't it, for us to uh, discern. You know, just and what what comes next? You know, like it, we, when we're talking about this picture of taking the corner, and we're coming around through the corner, and I think we've done quite a bit of cornering work. Um, and it's like, okay, now we're going to come into this next arena where it's important to to discern what needs to change, what needs to, what do we need mm -hmm. to embrace, what do we need to, in effect, shift, so that we can actually cooperate with the Lord and go into acceleration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any ideas? Well, I, I don't think much has changed uh, from the time when Jesus said, I'm going to send the comforter mm -hmm. to guide you into all truth. Mm -hmm. I think that 
that is still an appropriate <laughs> approach to take to the times when we know we, we need to make a shift and we don't mm -hmm. really fully understand what that is. And that's to go on an adventure with the one who can guide us into that truth. Wow. Really find new places of, of friendship with the Holy Spirit. Of, uh, you know, what is it, Paul said, uh, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think, according to the power that works in us. Right. Mm. Who is that? Yeah. That's not an it. That's actually a who. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's the Holy Spirit. So I think finding new ways to make friends with him. Wow. That's really good. Is, yeah. uh, is a big, is a jump off point. It's mm -hmm. a jump. You know, it's a journey mm -hmm. point, mm -hmm. uh, to finding and discovering the specifics of the shift. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Seems like a lot of that would be um, things that are deeply personal and deeply uh, rooted internally because it works within. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I good. think a lot of the, a lot of where our expectations get blown out of the water by God is in how he might use us or what the way that the gift mm -hmm. might be expressed or how he chooses to, I remember the first time I prayed for somebody and they just fell down. I'm like, <laughs> okay, like that's, that's not me, you know? And I tried to figure out for a long time, what did I do? differently that made that happen yeah right yeah. you know but you know it's <laughs> yeah that was the powerful prayer yeah right yeah <laughs> yeah exactly. i don't even remember what i said tell me how so, to do that one again <laughs> but you know he he, he meets our, and, and beats our expectations through um what he does in and through us mm. yeah yeah it's good i love good. this um place of um understanding the need for wisdom, like we've talked about a little bit with discernment. And, um, and yet there's this place of intimate abandonment, right? Like this oh, yeah. place of oh, like yeah. complete letting go yeah. and co being completely known. Yeah. And, um, oh, yeah. that, right there. I, I right think there. that's, that's probably one of the, for many of us, it's an unfamiliar place Whew. to be completely known and to completely let go. Mm. Um, I, it's, it's, um, I think that's more, if I could say, it's what I sense. He's saying, this is what my heart is for you in this season, is to be completely known and to fully let go, you know? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Beth DeWitt commented earlier, and uh, she just said, I remember the analogy of the Holy Spirit being a wind that blows into our lives. Yeah, the, by That's Jesus good. himself, it's a good analogy. Yeah. Mm. It's good. Mm -hmm. You know, one of, the, um, one of the things I've appreciated about you, Dave, not just in what you share publicly, but as we've had some conversations, I feel like you you live the the things you're talking about here where you make room for the room for the next really mm -hmm. and you know i know that your your parents had seen you know a measure of revival mm -hmm. you've seen a measure of revival and you see you're seeing the start of another measure of revival yeah. and you know it's interesting you know when i'm speaking as someone who's younger one of the things that i find is you talk with younger people and there's there's this vision and there's an ability to perhaps sense some new things that are on the horizon with younger leaders and stuff like that. And that's part of how God incorporates freshness into things. Sure. And it's great. Um, but one of the things I've, I've, I've told people, you know, just plainly as I talk with them one-on-one -on -one is, um, you know, to being able to sense the new when you're young is not my goal. My goal is that when I'm, I've, I've actually said this is that when I'm 70, that I would embrace the next. And I think that I would love to hear from you a little bit about mm, how do you, how do you navigate those waters of, and I know it's not so simple as just knowing that there's going to be a next, but you actually have to like, there's an abandonment and there's a surrender in that. And like, you know, it's one of those things. It's like Indiana Jones getting to the, getting to just the right, to just the right chalice. You know, it's like, right. It, it, it's not just about getting there. There's, there's like a humility, a humble path through that. And you've modeled that so well. And I don't know if you have any wisdom for, for those that are listening, because I feel like there's such an opportunity to miss the next, whenever there's one of these sorts of transitions afoot. 
Uh, no, there's a real danger in that. And what have, what have we always said, you know, the, the people who resist the current move of God are those that experience the last move of God, right? Mm -hmm. uh, they typically are the ones that resist that. And we just determine in our heart we're not going to be that. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are challenges to that because often what you see, and it's what, it's what the generation before us saw in us, the, the older generation. Yeah above us saw in us is, you know, you walk through that freshness and that exploration and you make mistakes. Mm -hmm. You do. Mm -hmm. And so we see that in the next generation coming up or the generations coming up and, and exploring in God and, and trying to find their way and see what God is doing now. And I think it's, it's having a, an understanding of generational living, generational uh, leadership generationally, uh, having a generational mindset mm. that recognizes the value in each generation. Uh, we live with a real, and I don't know if this is a key or not, but it's, it's something we've always lived, Deb and I, and, and our family lived with a real uh, appreciation and value for difference. Yeah. For that ability for somebody to see something differently than I see it. Mm. Uh, Deb and I model it quite a bit. I, I, I'm Deb sees color in a way that uh, most people don't see it. She actually, we believe she actually has some different cones in her eyes that sees the depths of color like uh, mm -hmm. very few people do. I'm colorblind. Well, that's a little difference. Mm -hmm. uh, that's just an example of the differences in yeah. our life. Well, I think that that if we can, if we can value uh, the differences in people and in the generations and how God, how God wants to, uh, Mark, you said something earlier, God, uh, God is the same yesterday, today and forever. You know, he doesn't change in character, but he certainly changes in the way he demonstrates yeah. himself and experience and exposes himself to his people. I mean, that's, that's so different. How he works miracles is so different. All of those. Mm -hmm. So I think mm -hmm. having a real value for difference is important uh, in this mm -hmm. time. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's that's part of it for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you for that. And and I don't want to keep coming back to just this, the simplicity of this, but it's no, really please how, do. It, well, it's really how we have chosen to live. Uh, you guys have heard me share this, but like when I first took over the leadership of the mission, uh, we were it was a Christmas. Uh, time and I, I ask a friend of Mars and an old mentor of ours, Paul Schock, to come and sit at the table to come and and speak on our Christmas Eve service. And he came and sat around the table afterwards. We had some soup together, and uh, he started. It was it was. I felt like I was sitting with the apostles. He and another guy who was who was uh, 85 years old and was de and was declaring that the Lord owed him five more years of ministry. Uh, and. And uh, they were just chatting about God and about the word. And it's just like this rich richness. And Paul Schock turned to me suddenly and he said, Dave, you are not meant to pastor that church. That's not your job. And I thought, oh, my goodness, I just committed to these people. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, no, that's not your job. And, the, and this old, old guy who's from England, he said, that's right. That's not your job. Yeah. And Paul followed up and said, your job is to listen to the Holy Spirit and do what he says. Mm. That's your only job. Mm. Yeah. Come on. Come on. And we, we have taken that on and said, this is, this is where we live. This is where we've got to live. And uh, mm. it's, it's paid huge dividends uh, because he really does know how to lead us. Mm -hmm. He knows mm. what's around that curve. He knows when we should step on the gas, mm -hmm. when we should step on the brake, when we mm. should make the shift. Mm. And, uh, I, I I know I'm beating the drum, but that's the one that's carried us through a lot. And yeah. I, I so look forward to the differences that are coming. Mm. I do. Mm. In fact, I long for them. I've come yeah. back to that place of desperation that I had yes. 25 years ago. Mm. Mm. I, I, want, I wonder if, um, you know, in you know, getting a little bit older, I've... Um, Thank you. Not old, but older. Yeah, appreciate that. Yeah, a little bit. Me getting a little bit older, I've, you know, I've, I've often said, you know, when I've seen somebody driving in front of me and they're going so slow, you know, and I've I've complained about it, and Annette, Annette would say to me, Mark, one day you'll be old, 
and it was like, <laughs> um, yeah, but I'm 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 going to stay young, you know. And I, I I think whilst that can be so easily just a throwaway line, I think I think being in a place where you are open to new things, I think is for me a, a young mindset. You know, it's like where you're hungry, not just for God to do something, but you're hungry, you're in a place where you are, you know, the experts will tell us, you know, stay, keep your mind young is actually to, to be doing puzzles or things that challenge your thinking, that challenge your mind. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, I, and I, I know we've talked about this so often and we talked about it today, but familiarity really does breed a contemptuousness. Mm -hmm. It really does. It really does take you into a place where you're yeah. satisfied with yeah. what's always been. And so therefore you set the scene and say, this is what's always been. So this is what's always going to be. But those people that you see who are embracing technology or new ways of doing things and, you know, all of those sorts of things, they tend to stay with an expectancy. They tend to stay with a place where it's like, I've got a lot more years yet to go type thing, um, mm -hmm. rather than I'm just waiting here to be zapped out of this, off this planet and, <laughs> you know, go into my next, next, yeah. you know, next adventure. Yeah. Good. I think um, I think God's really good at at for the hungry and the humble at leaving little markers along the way of just these moments, these encounters that just you're like, oh, there it is. Like, oh, that's a f that it's <coughs> it's the goodness, tangible goodness of God that we get in in these sweet moments, like Saturday at La Barge last year, the Saturday night. You know these. Mm -hmm these kind of markers that he's like, no, there's more, you know, and, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm sure Dave, for you, some of those moments are brand new and yet they're also probably in a very healthy way, very familiar too. Would you say, has he been giving you markers like that along the way? Uh, yeah, what it's it's really been pretty, pretty fun because um, you know, we we're in a transition time in our church where my son Ryan is now, oversees all the local ministries. And uh, so it's been a, you know, it's been a dance to learn what that, what that, how that operates to the best, uh, to the best. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we took a sabbatical, Deb and I took a sabbatical the last part of last year, the last three months of the year. Um, and um, we had, we had intended to continue to attend most of the services at the mission, but Deb broke her kneecap and was six weeks in a brace and couldn't leave the house. And, you know, so that didn't really mm -hmm. happen. So when I came back at the first of the year, you know, it was, it was with new eyes to see things differently. Mm. And what began to happen in every one of the services for about two months is it, we'd be in the worship or we'd be during the preaching time or ministry time. And the Lord would, I, I would point something out to me and say that right there, that's the mission. Now that right there is the mission. Don't look for that. That's what that's what you need to hang on to. Wow. That's what that's who you are, and that's who the who the mission is. And then the next week it would be something else. And it was so much fun because some of it was familiar, like, yeah, yeah, Lord, I know that's that's right. And some of it was like, well, that's really different, but boy, it has anointing on it. Boy, it's yeah. it's rich. It has rich flavor to it, you know. So it's been really exciting to to do that. And now we're trying to implement, you know, a, a lot of that. And it's, it's just fun. Yeah. So great. So great. It's good. Well, we're going to probably wrap our time up and, and um, I think, you know, we've done a lot of conversation today around uh, what God's going to do next. You know, what's, what is it that we're making this turn? We're heading into a new season, new place. And, I'm hearing from you, Dave, on on um, all those all those things that have have kept you hungry. <laughs> you yeah, know the experiences that you've had and, and where at. So, would you be able to pray for those listeners and the people watching? Um, just however the Lord leads you as we kind of close out our time today. Yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to, Father. We just first want to say that we are up for anything you want to do. Yes, <laughs> we are just up for anything. In fact, we hunger and long for 
for you to reveal yourself, first of all, more than anything else. That's our deepest hunger. We want mm. to know you and we want to be known by you. Mm. And so we, we just do thank you that that's who you are. That's you've, you've started revealing yourself from creation forward and you desire so much to have a people that you can call your own and who call you their father. And so we long for that. We long for that to continue. We long for the expression of, of who you are in our own personal identity and how you expand our own identity. We thank you for that. And we long for us, for, for us to really understand and know who we are in you mm-hmm. and to live like your true son and your true daughter and to, to be able to then change the atmospheres and the cultures around us so that the world will know who you are and how much you love them and how much you care for them, how much compassion you have over the situations of their lives. Lord, we just ask, we just ask that you would broaden our own perspectives Mm. or expand Mm -hmm. our visions to see beyond where we've ever seen before. Give us eyes really to see what you're doing and what you're, what you're accomplishing in the world even right now. Mm-hmm. Where we talk about what's coming, I just want to thank you for what is. Mm-hmm. I thank you for what you're doing right now mm-hmm. in people's mm-hmm. lives, in your church, in this mm-hmm. world. I just thank you for that. I thank you for what you're doing. I look for what you're, what's coming, Lord, and I hunger for the more that you've always promised your people. Mm-hmm. And so we thank you for that. And we just ask, expand our eyes, let our eyes see. Take the, take the stuff off of our eyes that, that keep us from seeing what you're doing. Take mm-hmm. the wax out of our ears so that we can hear what you're saying to us and what you're saying into the world today. And give us a heart that's willing to respond wholeheartedly towards mm-hmm. you. Yeah. Towards you, Lord. Towards mm-hmm. you. We long for you. And so we know that when we do that, you long to give us you. <laughs> you love your so we thank you for that. Lord, I just pray blessing on those that are listening and watching mm-hmm. right now. I just pray that your your special grace would abound over them in this season. And whatever they're facing, whatever they're dealing with, whatever life looks like for them right now, that they would know that you are in the midst of that. You will mm-hmm. never leave them. You'll never forsake them. Everything you are, every everywhere you are, everything you are is present and available to them right now. So we thank you. Thank you, Lord. You're so amazingly good. We mm-hmm. thank you for your Amen. Spirit. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 So maybe, maybe we finish with something that Dave said earlier on and that we let people, you know, receive what they just received, but to be able to say, hey, how about you give up the right to understand? That doesn't mean you give up understanding. It means you give up the right to have to understand what's going on. Because if we learn anything from what took place, was most of us would say, I have no, I don't understand what's going on. I don't understand what God's doing. Mm. I don't understand what's taking place. And a lot of people, in effect, disqualified themselves because they had to have understanding yeah. before they would do, with, before they would step in, before they would jump mm-hmm. into the pool, before they would jump into what God was doing. And I think a sign of that God is doing something, Holy Spirit is moving, is when you don't understand what's going on. Mm. Yeah. So I think I think if, if, comes in the journey, comes in the journey. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So a, a good place would be to question, say, have, am I am I camping on that right to understand, or am I saying no? I'm mm. giving up that. Yeah. Right. Mm. I'm giving up that right. Yeah. Mm. Super yep. good. Super yes. good. Thanks, Dave. Really appreciate it. Yeah. yeah, thank in. you so much. Thank you. And, so much. and I just want to say thanks to Beth DeWitt, who's just got a lot of yeah, comments. Same, we weren't able to get to them good all, stuff. but thank you so much. And, um, we'll yeah. have to call Dave Champion and find out where he was because uh, he's yeah. almost <laughs> always on these. So, yeah. All right, David, thank you so much. We thank appreciate you. Thank you so much, you. Dave. Yeah, thank you. Okay. All right. Bye, yeah. everybody. Bye bye.